Hey everyone, welcome back to the garage where we're continuing work on my 1989 BMW 325i E30. Now today's video, we're gonna try and replace the rear subframe bushings on this car. I say try because I'm really taking a shot in the dark trying to replace these subframe bushings with the subframe still in the car. There aren't any great tutorials out there on how to do this step by step, certainly not video ones. So if I'm able to get this done, hopefully it helps you guys out a lot that need to do this as well. Before we get into things, let's see how perish the subframe bushings are on this car. Okay, so I've got the rear end of the car jacked up, the wheels are off, and you can see that I placed the jack stands underneath the rocker panel and pinch weld right here. You see I've got this sort of bracket that's probably was used for jacking maybe at the factory or maybe it's even if you were changing the wheel out, if you had a flat or something, you put the spare tire jack there. Anyway, this isn't optimal jacking for this car. A lot of these cars have rust issues down here on the rocker panels. So if you're ever gonna go into this, first of all, make sure your rocker panels are, are strong. I've gone through here and done a lot of rust repair to ensure that they're strong, but even still, I'm double jacking this car. So I've got the jack stands on the pinch welds and then I've got the full on hydraulic jack on the differential still, just because I don't fully trust this method. But the idea behind this is this car's not gonna be up on the jack stands for too long and it should be okay. Of course, always safety first with this sort of thing because it can be very, very dangerous. Now the best place to jack up these cars is really from the subframe mount bolt right here, but since we're gonna be getting into that, you can't have it covered. You can't be jacking the car up from there, so you have to find a new place to jack it up. That's why I've got it here. So anyway, now that we've got it jacked up, let's check out how deteriorated the subframe bushings are. And you can see those bushings right in here this is your subframe and here's the bushing there's one on either side so i've got a trolley jack right here and what we're going to do is lift the subframe independently of the body and to do that i'm going to use this trolley jack to kind of lift the subframe up and we'll see how it begins to separate from the body you can see that subframe starting to kind of pull away from the body and that's what gives you that rotation that I was feeling when I was driving the car. On and off the throttle, you could feel the rear end almost changing wheelbase, so to speak. And it's because these bushings are completely deteriorated, pretty much separated. The inner part of the bushing separated from the outside of the bushing, allowing this whole subframe assembly, including the differential, your trailing arms, drive shafts, and your tires, to all move independently of the body in a non-controlled fashion. So when we lower this back down, you'll see how the subframe, you know, came back down away from the body. Now, these are rubber subframe bushings, so there will always be a little bit of movement, but that right there is excessive. That bushing should really be one piece, and right now, I bet when we take that out, it's gonna be two pieces. So, just kind of a quick overview of the deterioration you can expect from an old subframe bushing. Now, let's go look at the tools and the supplies we'll need to change these out. All right, so starting off here on the bench, we have our new parts. So that consists of two new subframe bushings right here. I think these were Febby brands. They're not BMW brand, but they were significantly cheaper and they're still really high quality parts. So I'm happy about those. I think each were like $12 or something like that. So great value there. And then I also bought two new subframe bushing bolts. These are BMW brand. Just be prepared if you're going to replace these. They're kind of expensive. They're like $17 a piece, but I was unsure if I was going to mangle the ones that are in the car right now, or maybe they're too rusted to reuse or something like that. I just didn't want to be caught without new parts needing to reassemble everything. So I've got two new subframe bolts here and also the corresponding nuts. Again, these were, I think, probably four or five dollars a piece. That's because they are pretty heavy duty fasteners. So I just wanted to make sure I had new parts just in case I got stuck with the old ones being worn out, broken or whatever it might be. So those are the new parts we'll need. Now we'll go into the parts we need to remove these subframe bushings. That all starts with a three jaw puller right here. It's a pretty big one. It's an eight inch one. I picked it up from Harbor Freight. I think it was like 25 bucks or something with a coupon. And then I picked up a Pittman arm puller from Harbor Freight as well. And the idea is that we'll use both of these in conjunction with one another to pull out the subframe bushing. So you'll notice that I've marked some lines here on the Pittman puller. And that's because I'm going to need to grind down this area to match these lines so that it can fit around the subframe bushing. So let's take a look what I mean there. So here's our subframe bushing, and we'll see these cutouts right here. So these correspond with those lines that I've drawn on the Pittman arm puller. So the idea is that this Pittman arm puller will slip over the top of this bushing and press against the subframe itself while the three jaw puller wraps around the flanges of this bushing 
and we ratchet it down on top of this Pitman arm puller and it will effectively pull the bushing out. At least that's the idea anyway. So we'll see how well that works. Again, I'll need to grind this down so that it is able to fit inside of those slots of the bushing. Now on reinstallation, it'll require a different set of tools. Again, these are all basically things you can get off the shelf at the hardware store. The first thing we'll need is this M14 threaded rod. I actually ordered this off of Granger.com. It was a lot cheaper than the hardware store was gonna have it. I forget what class of bolt this is, but it's a very strong threaded rod. And then I also got a set of nuts that correspond to this threaded rod. Again, they're M14. These are really strong nuts. I bought just a set of them off of Granger again, just because they were so cheap. I mean, I think I, the rod and the nuts were probably under $15 all in. So I'll put a link to these things in the description so you guys can find them pretty easily. And then we'll also need these large sockets. So these are what it's going to press the new subframe bushing in to the subframe itself. So these are three quarter inch sockets. I just had them laying around from my three quarter inch ratchet set. I'm sure a PVC pipe of an equivalent size would probably work okay. This is a 48 millimeter socket. And then the other one is a 45 millimeter socket. And then I've got these washers that we'll just put on top of there and the nut will sit on top of there. So the idea here is that this threaded rod will pass through the new subframe bushing and we'll route it through the subframe and up through the body of the car. And then we'll put a nut at the top where the rod passes through the top of the body of the car and we'll snug it down. And then on the other side, we'll have this cup pressing on these flanges of the subframe bushing and we'll just ratchet this up and it should push the bushing into the subframe. Now I know that probably doesn't make sense without demonstrating it. I can't demonstrate it right now. We'll see it in action and hopefully it works. Now I can't take credit for any of this tool design. I actually found it on the Bimmer forums, but unfortunately there just wasn't any great tutorial on how exactly this all goes together. It was just kind of a general idea of this sort of three jaw puller and pitman arm and what needs to be done, but no one really had gone through showing you the exact steps of how to do it. So hopefully we can get that done here today. There's probably going to be a lot of trial and error with this design, but I'll try to document it as best I can so that you guys can go in there and try the same thing as well and hopefully get these bushings installed without having to remove the subframe itself. So that's enough talk. Let's just dive into it and get it done. All right, so just kidding about the grinder, that would have taken like 10 years. So I just used the angle grinder. I just put this in the vise and just use the angle grinder to cut out those corners I needed to cut out and it got it done in like two minutes. So those are the chunks that I had to cut out. So you can actually see how this bushing now fits inside of those corners now perfectly. So that should be good. I don't think I need to grind anything further down this Pitman arm puller, but we'll just have to see. That is that done. So now let's go over to the car and see if this will work. Okay, so I finally got the driver's side bushing out. So you can see I used almost every tool in my arsenal to get this thing out. Let's take a look at the old bushing compared to the new one. Okay, so over here on the bench, we can see the old bushing, which is completely separated, the inner and outer, and then next to the new bushing, which is one unit, which is what this should have been. Now, before going into this, you'll notice that I switched from a three jaw puller to a two jaw puller. There was just no way to actually use a three jaw puller with the space you have. So I used a two jaw puller. I was able to extract the 
outer portion of the bushing fairly easily. The Pitman arm attachment that secured the two jaw clamp against the subframe itself so that it could extract this independent of the subframe only was necessary for about half of this operation. And that's because the innermost part started to separate along the way. And the top part of this innermost section of the bushing was fused to the body of the car itself because there's about a half inch extrusion at the top of this bushing that goes into the body. And it, as you can see, was just all rusted out. Once I got the outer part of the bushing out of there, I was now left to deal with the inner part. Now this inner part, I just started whacking it with the sledgehammer and it just broke off the top of it, which left this piece still fused in the body of the car. So at this point, I had to take out the Dremel tool and with the tungsten cutting bit, I was able to cut this insert in half. And then I used a small tip flat blade screwdriver and just kind of got into the edges here and just hit it with a hammer and used it as a wedge to kind of free both sides of this out. So as you can see, there was a lot of rust and corrosion on those, but a little bit of hitting with the hammer I was able to free them up. So again, I think it's tungsten carbide Dremel bit. Be sure you have that on hand because I don't know how else you'd get this thing out of there because it gets fused to that body. We've got aluminum fusing with steel and that's what you get. You get this really seized type of fitting. If your bushings are really old, I'm sure these are the original ones. Expect them to separate like this. Okay, so let's get the new bushing in there. Uh, hopefully the second side goes a lot faster, but we will only know once we get one side successfully put in. I'll probably apply a little bit of silicone spray on this to help it slide into the metal housing of the subframe. Then hopefully we'll just slide a new bolt in there, put a nut on it and call it good. Then we can move on to the next side. Let's see how it goes. Let's get to it. All right, so that's the left side done. Now let's take on the right side. All right, and just like that, both subframe bushings are installed. Let's take a look at the tools that actually were needed to do this job, as well as the old bushings that we took out. All right, so right here are the key tools that allowed me to remove the subframe bushings while the subframe was still installed in the car. So the first thing that we used was the two jaw puller in combination with the Pitman arm puller that's been modified. As you can see, there's sort of V channels that I've cut into this, and that allowed it to fit in the cutouts in the subframe bushing itself. So this could butt up against the subframe and the two jaw pullers could push against this while drawing the bushing out of the socket. This actually worked pretty well. However, I did encounter an issue and I wasn't able to use this to extract the entire bushing. I actually had to take this out 
and then just swap over to just using the two jaw puller. And the problem is that the intersection of the bushings actually began to separate from the outside. And while that's a problem in itself, the additional problem that I ran into was that the inner portion of the bushing had become seized with the body itself and this wasn't going anywhere while that was still wrapped around it. So I had to extract the outer portion of the bushing first and then work on the inner portion of the bushing. Which leads us to the next critical tool for this job. It was actually the Dremel tool equipped with the tungsten carbide bit. This allowed me to grind away the remaining aluminum portion of the inner subframe bushing because it was seized to the body. The only way to remove this inner subframe bushing was to actually whack it with a sledgehammer and break it free and extract it and then get in there with the Dremel tool and cut the remaining piece of it in half and use a sort of chisel and pliers to pull these pieces out of there. So a little bit more involved than I was anticipating, but just know if you're gonna get into this, make sure you have a Dremel with that tungsten carbide bit equipped with it because you might see something just like I have here and you'll have to grind something away. Now, as far as installing the bushing went, that was a lot easier than taking it out. So we've got our M14 threaded rod here. I've actually cut it down to 16 inches. That's all the rod you actually need to do this job. And then on the top side, this part goes inside the car. We, I had a 45 millimeter socket and that's used as a cup to draw the bushing in from the top side. And then from the bottom side, I used a, let's see what size, this is a 50 millimeter socket on the bottom to push the bushing up into the subframe. Now I did coat the bushings with some silicone spray just to kind of ease it into place. Silicone spray evaporates so it poses no issue further on down the line. And then on either end of these sockets are large 14 millimeter nuts and 14 millimeter washers that kind of allow this to ride up the shaft and, and the washer keeps the nut from binding with the socket. So anyway, that's the installation hardware. I did use an impact gun just to speed up the process, but you don't need an impact gun. You can just use a wrench or a ratchet to make this all go into place. So really, when you look at the tools, it's nothing all that complicated. I think honestly, I mean, if you don't include the Dremel tool, which I already had, I probably have under $50 worth of stuff here. Now, important note about the sockets that I'm using, they are three quarter inch size sockets, which means the M14 threaded rod can pass through the middle. So over here, we have our old bushings. And again, you can see how the inners separated from the outer and they were thoroughly rusted and looking pretty bad. The bolts and nuts that hold the subframe in weren't actually in that bad of shape, but since I bought new ones, I went ahead and threw the new ones in there. I wasn't sure what I'd find when I got in there. So I just went ahead and replaced them. These are actually in decent shape, but yeah, you live and learn. Okay, with the subframe bushings out of the way, now I'm gonna try and raise the rear end of the car a little bit. The rear end sits a little bit lower than the front end, so I bought some spacers to try and help the springs out a little bit. Let's take a look at the parts. So over here on the bench, we have some spacers that actually go underneath the rear springs. You can put them on top of the trailing arm and the spring goes on top of them. And they come in three different sizes and you can stack them all together to get about 15 millimeters of increased ride height. Or you can use one individually or two or whatever you wanna do. You put this aluminum cylinder over the cone that sticks up out of the trailing arm. And then you put this over the top and then your spring goes on top of this. So of course you get two stacks, each with varying sizes shims, and this can increase the ride height or lower the ride height in the back end of the car. These are made by Condor Speed Shop. They're about $48 or something, 50 something after shipping, and it's all pretty nice quality stuff. So anyway, let's get this on there and see how much we can increase the ride height.
so that wraps up this video of installing the rear subframe bushings and raising the rear end of the car just a little bit. I took the car out for a test drive. The rear end is way tighter than it was before. Definitely worth going through all this work and fixing those rear subframe bushings because wow, those things were deteriorated beyond belief. So I'm glad I did that and I'm glad I was able to show you guys how to do it with the subframe still in the car. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys so now you know what tools you need to run out and get if you need to replace these subframe bushings yourself. So I'm at the point where a lot of the mechanical issues are now pretty much all sorted on this car. All that's left is just to do the interior. So look forward to that in the next video where I strip down the seats and hopefully put some new leather seat covers on there. We'll see. But until then, thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you guys again soon. Mm -hmm.